On the surface, Elon Musk appears to be a fun-loving visionary that has broken the mold of what being a billionaire means. But is any of this actually real? In this video, I want to see if we can't discern a dark truth behind this public image. One of the first points I'd like to start with is the question of how it is that Musk seems to be able to do so much. As of the present, Musk is currently head of Tesla, SpaceX, Starlink, The Boring Company, Neuralink, and was vying to own Twitter. At the same time, Musk seems to find the time to tweet at all hours and spends an incredible amount of time engaging in publicity stunts. In addition to these activities, Musk seems to spend a great deal of time doing what can only be described as partying and fooling around. Something seems very off about how, despite all of these commitments and diversions, he is able to operate as the real-life Tony Stark. And this is before we get into the persistent accusations of significant drug usage from multiple independent sources. It seems inconceivable that someone leading such a dissolute life would be capable of managing a business empire of such scope. Something doesn't seem right here. The next point I'd like to raise is that of how it is that Musk is able to engage in behavior which can only be described as morally dubious and yet experience minimal consequences. Take, for example, Musk's relationship to cryptocurrency. In 2021, Tesla purchased $1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin and then announced it would begin accepting payment in the cryptocurrency. This contributed to Tesla being able to report a profit when its core business was actually running at a loss. This was repeated in a fashion with Dogecoin. Musk used his Twitter account to heavily promote the cryptocurrency and offered to make some Tesla merchandise payable with it, profiting from the subsequent rise in price his announcements caused. As of the present, Dogecoin is still accepted for purchasing a Cybertruck graffiti cuffed beanie and a sexy mug and it has been announced that journeys on his boring company tunnels may be payable in Dogecoin. This is hardly revolutionary and seems like a cynical gimmick. He is now being sued for his role in pumping the value of Dogecoin. These are not the only times when Musk has made claims which began as grandiose futuristic pronouncements, only to be walked back at a later date or transformed into something farcical. Take the Hyperloop for example. This was a futuristic tunnel-based maglev rail system, that later turned into a small tunnel for cars with some flashy neon lights. Then we have Tesla's level 5 self-driving cars, which we were told would be here by the end of the year for 9 straight years now. It hasn't happened and Tesla cars are still classified as level 2, meaning they aren't fully self-driving. But this has not stopped Tesla from selling a fully self-driving package. Then we have the much publicized Neuralink claims that they were developing a brain chip implant that could potentially treat issues such as insomnia. Musk provided no clear guidelines for when or how any of this would be done, nor did he provide any proof of its effectiveness. In fact, there wasn't, and still isn't, a product on the market, leading to his product presentation, for which there was no product, being roundly dismissed by neuroscientists as neuroscience theater. In addition, we have the infamous Solar City solar roof that Musk paraded to the world in the lead up to Tesla's acquisition of the company. The product in question was not functional, and as far as I'm aware, is still not functional. And yet, it was pivotal in securing Tesla's shareholder approval of the purchase of Solar City, something which personally profited Elon and his brother Kimball greatly. To appreciate how bizarre it is that Musk has been able to repeatedly present non existent technology and still retain his standing as some kind of tech superhero. Imagine if Steve Jobs had presented the iPhone to the world, only for it to turn out to be a paper notepad glued to a Blackberry phone, and getting away with it. And recently, this seems to be accelerated. In 2022, we have had an AI robot, which was a person in a fake suit dancing on a stage, a robovan, a Tesla home, robotaxis again, and the Hyperloop is being revived after nine years of nothing. In addition to being able to continually present products which either don't exist or become something completely new, we then have the far darker case of alleged drug selling and massive theft of metal in the Tesla Gigafactory in Texas that resulted in a 15-month FBI investigation which was halted because apparently the agents spoke to people high up in Tesla and concluded that there wasn't a problem. This is the whistleblower Carl Hansen describing the incident. And he said, Carl, all I, you know, all I know is, all I can tell you is that, you know, um, Agent X talked to several people high up in Tesla. Um, 
and determined that, you know, there was no merit to, to anything. I said, wait a minute, but five, six months ago, you're in my house telling me how crazy this is. You're telling us to call the local police, call 911. I told you about the house being broken into. You know, this is happening. All this is going on. Uh, yeah, you'll have to talk to so-and-so. But good luck. That a 15-month-long FBI investigation could be closed on such a pretext kind of hints towards something darker operating in the background. It almost seems like Elon Musk is protected, and this is something Hansen claimed he was told when he reached out to contacts in the Department of Defense. Tesla. Oh, man, this is Elon Musk. He's, yeah, Elon Musk is he's protected. He's, he's, he's this, he's that. Why would this be? Why would Musk be protected? Could it be that Musk has ingratiated himself with the U.S. military and security services? And if so, how? A good starting point would be looking at the origin of SpaceX and its offshoot Starlink. Musk traveled to Russia on multiple occasions to attempt to purchase ICBMs, intercontinental ballistic missiles, because, according to Bloomberg News, Musk figured it would be a good vehicle for sending a plant or some mice to Mars. First traveling with Dream Control and then returning later with Michael Griffin, Musk was unsuccessful in purchasing them. But, thankfully, on the plane returning from Moscow, Musk pulled off a Tony Stark level twist and after spending a little time on Excel, created a spreadsheet that showed he could make the rockets himself. This has recently been updated by Laurie Garver, who claims that an engineer spitting on Musk inspired him to make his own rockets. Buying ICBMs because you suddenly decided you want to drag humanity to the stars by first shooting mice and dried seeds at Mars is like a poor joke and looks like a poorly conceived and clumsy cover for the real purpose of SpaceX. A good indication that this is the case is the way in which SpaceX's pivot from Mars colonization into a fully fledged business is left unexplained. If it were a movie, this plot hole would be savaged. When you also factor in that SpaceX's first customer was the United States Department of Defense in conjunction with DARPA, then the origin story of SpaceX, as recounted by Musk and his compatriots, just falls apart. The company had to have been created in conjunction with security services, and I doubt that they wanted to hurl mice at Olympus Mons. If this were the case, a number of very strange points in the narrative of SpaceX make a lot more sense, because buying intercontinental ballistic missiles outside of a James Bond movie, is not something which a businessman can suddenly decide to do by himself. That this is the case is made clear by the presence of Michael Griffin, who at this point in time was part of Incutel, the CIA funding organization. Griffin would later take up a senior position in NASA and would grant SpaceX $396 million through the Commercial Orbital Transportation Services program, before SpaceX had even flown a rocket. Griffin would later come to Musk's rescue in 2008 when he awarded the company the first NASA Commercial Resupply Services contract worth $1.6 billion, a contract which saved the company from serious financial trouble. What's also noteworthy about the whole development is that Musk isn't the first billionaire linked to tech to try to get hold of and use Russian ICBMs. Bill Gates flew to Russia in the 90s to negotiate the use of a number of ICBMs for use in putting satellites into orbit for a telecommunications network called Teledesic, which looked exactly like Starlink. This seems like more than just a coincidence. And then of course we come to the presence of Starlink equipment in Ukraine. Musk attempted to hide the government funding which he received for transferring these capabilities to Ukrainian forces, but investigations have revealed that it was, at least partly, funded by USAID. If Musk is indeed what he looks like, a military contractor with ties to security services, then his ability to get away with all of the questionable behavior he and his companies have been accused of would make a lot more sense. It would mean that he has become too important to the security services to allow him to be subject to normal justice. And what about his ties to China? Has Musk only been courting and benefiting from US security services patronage? Or has he been playing the same game with other countries? This will be the subject of our next video on Musk.